Hello, doing a quick recording here. We're going to be replacing the CPUs in this Dell T5610. And yeah, without further ado, let's just get right into it. I'm just going to put the case side down. And yeah, this will be my first kind of like from the top recording. Um, yeah, I'm really hoping this goes well. So we have 10 minutes to do this and then we're out of space. All right, quickly, first thing we're going to want to do is move this uh, tray out of the way. It easily slides up and moves over. Next thing we want to do is remove this memory shroud. Yeah, so this video, we're not going to be talking much. We're just going to go straight through moving this. This here is for channeling airflow over the dedicated memory slots. Next, what we do here is quickly unscrew all of the, well, not quickly, I'm doing it quick, but all you have to do is unscrew all of these mounts for the, uh, for the CPU cooler. Once all these are done, then we take the CPU out, clean it off, and put in our new ones. What I will be replacing the CPUs with today are the E5 2650V2s. I currently have two E5 2690s in here. They're the V1s. Um, I found they ran way too hot with these Intel coolers here. Um, yeah, I did. I forgot to bring my thermal compound up, but that'll be just fine because we will be using the one that is included with these. But yeah. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see here on the camera. Let me see if I can do this properly. But yeah, right here is we have the E5 2650V2. I have two of them, and I got them from AliExpress yesterday, actually. So I will be putting them inside the system. So all you have to do is just release the tension clips here, and the CPU pops right out. Um, yeah, I might not clean this off because... Still good thermal paste, but yeah, you could just clean this off. It is the E52690, I know that, because um, I'm the one who put, I replaced the CPUs earlier. Uh, then what you're going to want to do is take your CPU that you're going to replace it with, and on it, there should be, I'll bring this up to the camera, there should be a little arrow here, as you can see. That arrow, you want to uh, line up with the board. Um, I don't know how zoom, this isn't zoomed in well, so... Let's see, get that into focus. But yeah, on the board, uh, there will be a little arrow indicating which side of the CPU goes in uh, which orientation. And that's very, very important. Um, so yeah, always being careful around this uh, socket area. I generally like to line up one corner and then I have pressure to work with to get the other corners in. And it just slides in there properly. Then when I mount the pressure, um, it, it generally says mount one side first then the other. What I like to do is put a little pressure on one arm and then get the other arm underneath. I found uh, it just gives a better uh, <laughs> thermal compound application. Um, or not that, well, a little bit with the thermal compound, but mostly uh, I've had issues where I thought the CPU was the issue um, because it just won't boot or something like that, and it turned out there, were, there was not enough uh, contact on the pins. So yeah, we're using this nice, cheap, included thermal compound. Um, what is it? I was just testing this thermal compound actually earlier today because I had a whole bunch and I was just going to throw it all out, but I was just testing it and it seemed all right. So I'm just going to use my finger here, get it all dirty, just mix it around. Um, but yeah, it seems like pretty decent quality thermal compound. You need to use enough, of course, to get it all around. This here is way too much, so I will be just scraping it off with my finger and putting the access on a paper towel. But in the meantime, well, I guess not in the meantime, but what we also have to do here is clean this heat sink off quickly. Um, you can use alcohol. I do have alcohol around. I'm not too picky whether it's pristine or not, because at the end of the day, it's not like having the cleanest surface isn't going to necessarily, well, it will help with thermal transfer a bit, but it's so minuscule that after you rub it with some paper towel or whatever, um, it'll be pretty clean. And yes, you can do it better. Yes, you can make sure there's no microfibers on there, but in, in everyday practical use, it's not going to be a huge deal. The biggest thing that will affect your thermal uh, performance is having a good heat sink and then having just some decent uh, thermal compound. Because it doesn't have to be great, but if you have bad, uh, what is it, thermal compound, it, it won't help. But biggest thing is have yourself a nice big heat sink. Um, one thing that you might notice with this Intel cooler here is that it has ridges, so you just want to fill that with uh, some thermal compound. Just, yeah, it wasn't really well machined, but 
doesn't really matter. It's all done there now. I'm just going to spread this out a little bit more with my finger. Uh, these are V2 CPUs, so they use less power, so I'm not too concerned with them. Um, like, obviously you want the best thermal com contact possible, but it's not going to, yeah, it doesn't need to be perfect is my point. That's, that's a thing that I think a lot of people get wrong with uh, computer hardware is they think it's like, oh, I need to be so super, super, like, careful or like whoever's working on computer hardware has to know exactly what they're doing they must be trained experts and when in reality like it's like i didn't know much about computer stuff about a whole year ago and now i have no like i can build systems without a problem um obviously there's a lot of learning and i've run into issues and i've knocked chips off graphics cards and i've done all that good stuff but <laughs> At the end of the day, like a lot of this hardware is not like 20 years ago where if you touch it and, and it shocks, it's all dead. Um, it's it, um, basically all I'm saying is don't be afraid to change your own CPUs. Biggest thing is just be mindful, be like, be gentle. <laughs> don't like just be careful where your screwdriver is going. Try not to get it close to any chips. And if you, you have to put your screwdriver close to, uh, to open or exposed uh, chips, um, just be very, 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 very gentle. And yeah, right now we're doing the second CPU here. And if the video does cut off, uh, basically what I'll just say now is if you have any questions, comments, um, or if you want to follow up video in terms of performance with these, uh, the system will now have dual uh, E52650 V2s. You can definitely leave me a comment and I will respond. I respond to every single one of my YouTube comments because we have 91 subscribers currently. And yeah, I'm looking to grow the YouTube channel a bit. Same deal, pop this uh, heat sink off here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to clean all that thermal compound off. We're gonna pull out that CPU. I'm gonna get a couple more pieces of, uh, what is this, paper towel ready. And yes, I'm moving as fast as I can because I'm on the clock of my phone running out of storage. So, see, I've just opened it up here. Uh, you can see, we're not. it's not a perfectly zoomed video, but yeah, all I'm gonna do is gently on the sides, grab the CPU like so, and you can see the underneath here, it's all, yeah, it's covered in thermal compound. This is what you want your CPU to look like uh, once, once you're putting it back in. Um, obviously, more spread out, but yeah, this is the second E52690 I'm pulling out. And here I'm taking the, uh, my second E52650 V2 that I'm replacing it with out here, and we'll be putting it into the socket. Um, yeah, don't, like, most people... Or just try not to touch the pins, but it's not going to kill the CPU if you touch the pins. Or, if, yeah, like, they're not as fragile as you think. At the same time, I did pay a lot of money for the chip, so do, do be mindful with that. Again, line up this tiny little, uh, here, let me get in the camera, this tiny little arrow with the motherboard. You might not be able to see it, but it's in, it's in this corner here. Have it lined up. Gently place it into the socket. Obviously, you can move it around a teeny bit, make sure it's in there. And then again with the again with the retention clips, uh, pull the first one down a little bit, and then get get this. Uh, it has a little elbow on it, but yeah, get that one under first, while keeping tension on the other arm. And what this does, it keeps tension across the whole uh, socket, versus doing one arm at a time because it is such a large socket that your your chip can kind of move and sway. So you just want to be mindful with that. Uh, and all you do again. Nothing fancy. Grab a paper towel, wipe off your your excess or leftover CPU compound, and yeah, I'm a system builder, so I have a lot of this. I kind of hate having to <laughs> not waste, but use so much thermal compound. But it's just one thing that it's not that expensive when it comes to the total cost of the build, but it is something that is super crucial. And not that it's important, but something I'll point out about this heatsink here is you can see it's machined down better. So it's pretty flat. There's no huge grooves. Um, but yeah, at the bottom of your heatsink, you always want to make sure you fill that with thermal compound as well, just a little bit if it's if there are grooves. And yeah, I'm going to have to end the video there. We're at 9 minutes and 30 seconds. So yeah, I'm going to do the exact same thing with this CPU cooler. And yeah, basically, if you guys have any, other, any questions regarding how to set up your system, um, how you want to change your, th like, change your thermal compound, upgrade the CPU, Drop them in the comments, but what I'll leave you with is it's not as complicated as it may seem, and anyone can do this. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching the video, and have a nice day. There goes end. <laughs>
Sorry guys, I can't hit the stop button. There we go. 